Now then. Tis I. The situation may be more complicated than we anticipated. Indeed, I shall remain watchful. Ere thou goest, another matter requireth thine attention. A young maiden, full eager to... Wherefore inquirest thou of her fairness? Oh, very well. Be she damsel or devil, I shall direct her steps to Revenant's tome. Save thine insinuations for one given to such impropriety. Thou shalt not find me amenable. Across the sea from the land of Domar have we traveled. We seek audience with the ruler of these lands. Who here speaks for you?
We have traveled some several thousand miles across the sea from the nation of Doma, in hopes that we might find sanctuary in these lands. Sanctuary, Lady Yugiri? Aye. Lying within Othard, Doma was under the dominion of the Galian Empire, as I'm sure you are aware. When the War of Succession broke out in Garlemald, we aspired an opportunity to free ourselves from the yoke of imperial oppression and took up arms. Only to be crushed. And so I gathered what few domans escaped the reckoning and guided them hither to your shores. A war of succession? Then the Emperor... Forgive me, you said that Doma was under Imperial rule, did you not? Doma is gone. Raised to the ground as an example to the other provinces. Twelve have mercy. And your people? On a ship anchored in Vesper Bay, flying borrowed colors. Many were complicit in the rebellion, or are kin to those who were. They will not come ashore until I send word that it is safe to do so. I sought an audience with your rulers, but was summarily refused. The lords of Ulda are not wont to entertain foreign refugees without suitable encouragement. Mayhap I was foolish to expect otherwise, but our supplies run low and we have young ones in urgent need of care. I have seen the tents outside the gates, however. We are not the first to seek asylum. Nor will we be the last. Be that as it may, Ulda is no friend to Garlemald. Your tale would stir the hearts of many men and women here. The Sultana and the Syndicate will not be so easily swayed. But I shall see that you are granted an opportunity to plead your case. This is within your power? Well, far be it from me to boast, but I do have the ear of certain influential individuals. I am in your debt. Lady Yugiri, forgive me for observing, but your choice of attire seems like to evoke feelings of mistrust. Men are wont to fear the unfamiliar. We know this from experience. We seek only to spare the people of Ulda unnecessary disquiet. I shall defer to your experience, then. I thank you for your understanding. It seems I have urgent business with the Flame General. I leave our guests in your capable hands.
I, Yugiri of Doma, am honored to meet you at last, Your Grace. To mark this auspicious occasion, I should like to present to you the finest treasures our humble nation has to offer. Alas, the circumstances which have brought me here today have divested me of both time and dignity. I come before you as a pauper in direst need of aid, to request that you grant my people asylum. Animal, 17th in the line of U, welcome you to our city. Be at ease, Lady Yugiri. Although I myself have heard the tale of your misfortune, I would ask that you recount it once more for the benefit of the others here present. As you wish, Your Grace. For many years, my nation, Doma, suffered under the yoke of imperial rule, and my people yearned to be free. Thus, when a war of succession broke out in Garlemald, we sought to take advantage of the chaos and reclaim our liberty. Alas, our enemy proved less preoccupied than we had hoped, and our rebellion was put down in the most brutal fashion. Those who survived, how many do they number? More than 200 souls huddle within the cramped confines of our own galleon's hold. Yet this figure accounts for but one of the number of ships which escaped the purge. It is my hope that you will allow us all to dwell within your walls. Should that prove unfeasible, however, I humbly ask that you accept as many of my people as your resources allow. Pray understand, we do not beg a boon, but propose instead an arrangement. We would serve as soldiers or tradesmen until our debt is repaid. What are the Syndicate's opinions on this matter? I, for one, think it's a marvelous idea. Lady Yugiri and her people strike me as an industrious lot, and there are parts of the city which have yet to be fully restored. If they are willing to work, I see no reason not to let them. The head of the Mirage Trust is not known for his generosity. He sees profit in this. I agree. That said, these are foreign refugees. To admit them would require a formal resolution. Shall we call a vote? The law is the law. Lord Lolorito? Tell me, are you blind or willfully ignorant? Even now, 
Our streets are choked with the displaced victims of the Calamity and Alamegan refugees. They live hand-to-mouth, subsisting on aid provided by the Immortal Flames, the cost of which grows ever higher. The wealth of Ulda is not without limits, my friends. And need I remind you that these refugees are prone to violence and criminal activity? You have all read the reports, I think. Without homes or employment, it is only a matter of time before men grow desperate and take that which they imagine has been unjustly denied them. Yet, knowing this, you would have us swell their ranks. Mayhap you think the brass blades and the flames are not hard-pressed enough? Some say the chairman of the East Aldenard Trading Company passes Gil thrice daily. This may explain how he came to be the wealthiest man in Uldar. Or it may simply be that he's ruthless beyond reckoning. Surely the Sultanate can support the few hundred domains Lady Yugiri represents. That our resources have been taxed, I do not deny. But we are hardly in danger of financial collapse. I move that an exception be made. An exception, Your Grace? I am suddenly reminded of a similar debate some years ago regarding a number of Alamegan refugees, if memory serves. What were your words that day? <sighs> ah, yes. The law is the law. And so our visitors remained in little Alamigo. Mayhap our wise and benevolent Sultana would be so good as to enlighten us as to which other of our laws should not be upheld. Mind your tongue, Lolorito. My lord, I share your concern for the welfare of our great nation, but we must endeavor to take a longer view. You know as well as I that people can be a resource still more precious than Gil. Precious or not, they were never yet so reliable. And unlike those who frequent your establishment, I have no desire to gamble with my future. Uldar's greatest asset is, and has ever been, her material wealth. We risk this at our peril. One need only look to Telegi Adelegi's example for evidence of the danger in allowing sentiment to dictate policy. How far the vaunted Mirage have fallen, both in repute and profitability, since he began employing refugees. How I choose to conduct my affairs is not your concern, my lord. A proposal has been tabled. Given its urgency, I move we forego further debate and call a vote. To accept the Doman refugees or not, those in favor, I bid you remain. Those opposed, I bid you leave. within my power to welcome you and your people, Lady Yugiri. As you have observed, however, my authority in such matters is regrettably limited. Without the consent of the Syndicate, I cannot act. I understand, Your Grace. And I appreciate all that you have done on our behalf. The nerve of the man! If that bastard had not forsaken the eastern trade route, little Alamigo would now be thriving. 
Oh, that you should have traveled so far under such dire circumstances, only to be refused in this manner is utterly unconscionable. Pray, accept my sincerest apologies. Now that the Empire no longer poses an immediate threat, they see little reason to maintain the pretense of unity. The Monitorists have grown especially defiant of late. Lord Lolorito most of all. But this is neither the time nor place for that discussion.
How goes the fishing? Caught anything slippery? Aye. Our suspicions were well founded. The Serpent Reavers are indeed the culprits. The plot thickens. Has there been any movement in Thamalan? It has been blessedly quiet. Which is to say the Amalja are being no more or less of a nuisance than usual? Summoning a freet with such crystals as they have hoarded? Uriange too reports not out of the ordinary. Then we have our explanation. Your explanation for what, pray tell? For the recent spate of crystal thefts in Thanalan, we naturally assumed that the trail would lead us back to the Amalja. Yet it did not. It led us across the sea unto Vilbrand. Vilbrand? There have been reports of increased Sahagin activity of late. Oh gods, they mean to summon Leviathan? That is the way of it, I fear. Whilst conducting our investigation on behalf of the Mineral Concern, we came upon evidence implicating the Serpent Reavers. With the aid of the Maelstrom, I was able to verify our suspicions. It is only a matter of time before Leviathan returns to harrow the seas. But there is more. One of the Sahagin, an elder by my judgment, spoke of attaining the gift and knowledge of eternity. Ugh. Such a disturbance in the ether. If I did not know better, I should think this device defective. And there is the explanation. shall begin. Our Lord shall rise midst surging waves to wash away the finless ones. And I shall be granted the gift and knowledge of eternity, and with the emissary stand equal. Then shall I know no cessation, no oblivion. Whence comes this promise of immortality? The Emissary? We have outstayed our welcome. The gift and knowledge. Are the two of you quite well? You... you shared that vision, did you not? Even before the Sahagin made mention of the Emissary, I recognized Elidibus's words. He is behind this. But surely it is not within his power to grant the Echo. My lady, Unless we act swiftly, Leviathan will rise again. The Admiral has already requested that we intervene to prevent this. Failing that, we are to attend to the Primal's extermination. She will have our full cooperation. Let us make haste to Limsa Lominsa. I mean to play a part in this mission. Tataru, pray, take charge in my absence. My lady, are you sure this is wise? I am aware of the risks, but there is something I must see with mine own eyes. The true nature of the Echo. Very well. I shall not stand in your way. On the condition that you permit me to accompany you as bodyguard. Your company is ever welcome, Thancred. 
I take it something ill is afoot. Aye, a primal is about to be loosed upon Eorzea. A primal? A godlike being whose very existence is a bane upon the land. We scions of the Seventh Dawn are sworn to put an end to their kind. I see. Know then that I am learned in the arts of war. In return for the kindness you have shown my people, I would lend you my blade. It would be most welcome. When contending with a primal, one can never have too many able allies. If you crave a more intimate understanding of the problems facing Eorzea, this experience is like to provide it. Be sure to come well prepared.
Damn them. They have made thralls of soldiers and civilians both. Did I miss much? So that is how you fight in the Far East. Mental note, pick no quarrel with domains. But seriously, if I am to keep up, I must needs forsake elegance for efficiency. You'll forgive me my lateness. been something of a liability of late, I know. Tis high time I set about making amends. Long have you shriveled, Zorwalkers, tormented our kind. But no more! Your time is at an end! With salt in your wounds, and sea in your lungs. Lord of the world, hearken to our plea. Lord of the world, deliver us from our misery. Do you feel that? I know this sensation. It's the echo. What? Blah! Such power! It is transcendent!
faithful servants. Deliverance. I beseech you, come forth. Die, damn you! single ship. Hells take that sea demon. Gather the survivors and get to shore. Leave the wrecks for the pirates. Leviathan wastes no time. The diversionary squadron is lost. For a mercy, twould seem the primal now makes for open sea. But why does he not press his advantage? Unless... God save us! He means to unleash a tidal wave! There used to be a hamlet beyond South Tidegate in western Lanosha. Halfstone, it was called. Some years prior to the Maelstrom's founding, Leviathan rose from the briny depths and set about unleashing watery hell upon us. On that occasion, the company of heroes put him down before he could do too much damage. But when the bastard came next, this time in the wake of the Calamity, we were not so fortunate. 
Weary of ravaging our shoreline, he summoned a tidal wave which fair leveled Hearthstone and washed the soil away for good measure. The area was subsequently occupied by the Sahagin. Aye, the thrice damned creatures transformed it into a spawning ground for their brood. Given the quantity of crystals stolen to feed him and his legion of thralls, we can be fairly sure that Leviathan is stronger now than in his previous incarnations. If that sea demon is left to wreak havoc, what befell Hearthstone may well befall a larger settlement, even Limsa. That cannot happen. The primal must be stopped. That was ever our objective, Admiral. But how are we to achieve it? The sea is Leviathan's uncontested domain. The ships of the Third Squadron could not close to within a hundred yards of the Primal, nor could their cannons pierce his defenses. I have read the reports, Master Thancred. Our warships may as well have been bloody pleasure barges for all the good they did. Seven hells! Is there no way that we might strike back? The company of heroes defeated Leviathan, having first lured him into an inlet. But we must needs contend with him upon the open sea. It will avail us little to consult past experience. Admiral, if I may. Speak freely, Marshal. By all accounts, Leviathan's most formidable weapon is the very sea itself. Waves and whirlpools, tides and currents, all these things are his to command. The key to victory, I believe, lies in disarming our foe. This, in effect, is what the company of heroes achieve with their ruse. We cannot lure Leviathan from the sea a second time. But what if we could weaken his hold upon the element of water? I have heard of devices capable of such wonders. They draw upon the power of corrupted crystals, I am told. If mounted upon a ship, such a device might be used to prevent Leviathan from bringing the full force of the sea to bear against us, rendering him no more dangerous than any other sea serpent. Of course! Sid built a similar device to grant the Enterprise safe passage through Garuda's Tempest, did he not? Begging your pardon, my lady, but to give credit where it's due, this is something I heard from an old arcanist friend of mine. It makes little difference who thought of it first, so long as it works. Beg the specifications of this device from your friend, and I shall pass them on to our people at Naldic and Vermelis. But before we proceed any further, I would voice one concern. Piercing Garuda's defenses is one thing. Suppressing Leviathan's attacks, quite another. In matters of science, I am as a babbling babe, but I cannot well imagine that such a feat would be possible without a veritable mountain of corrupted crystals. The question being, do we have a ship big enough to bear such a burden? Mayhap not, Admiral, but too might. Recall you the tale of Mistbeard's greatest haul? It is said that he lashed two ships together, side by side, the better to bear his plunder. By your leave, we might attempt to repeat the trick. The gods know it would be quicker than building a new vessel. Mistbeard did this? Truly, Marshal, upon the subject of the Pirate King, you are as a scholar. Now, from what I have gleaned of these matters, the device will need to be in close and constant proximity to the target. To wit, we must lash our twin vessel to Leviathan. 
This in itself will be no small feat. Ramming speed will be required, but given the weight of the cargo, that will only be attainable with the aid of a towing vessel. Suffice it to say, the task of piloting said vessel will entail considerable danger, and I would not ask it of another. I volunteer myself. It will be dangerous for all involved, but we have no better recourse. Very well. Commodore. Assemble the remnants of the fleet at Moraby Bay. Give priority to our soundest vessels. The repairs can wait. Storm Marshal Slafierson, command of the operation is yours. I want that twin vessel ready to sail post haste. At once, Admiral. And then there is the small matter of slaying the beast. The fate of Limsa Lominsa rests upon your shoulders once again. Go well, warrior of light.
Lilo Minsons are sworn to strive till sea swallows all, and swallow all it would have had Leviathan prevailed. That we still strive now, we owe in no small part to you. Not for the first time, you have delivered Limsa Lominsa from the wrath of a primal. Never has our nation known a stouter ally. On behalf of my people, I give you my humblest thanks. Tis meet that I give thanks to old Mistbeard, too, for his fine solution, whatever else he may have been. Tis clear he was a resourceful soul. Would that I had a man like him in my service. Before I set foot in these lands, I had no inkling that the people of Eorzea contended with such mighty foes. Suffice it to say, their existence came as something of a shock, as did the idea that they could be defeated. This experience has served to remind me of the vastness of the world, and the boundless potential of man. Though I am but a refugee in this realm, I would fain be of use to you in your fight. Know that I am tutored in one of the foremost combat arts of the Far East. It may seem outlandish to the Eorzean eye, but should any of your people care to learn, I would be pleased to initiate them. And I will see to it that they are grateful. I have no doubt that your knowledge and skills will serve us well. Besides, your art is not so outlandish as you think. Would you not agree, Master Thancred? Not escapes your searching eye, Admiral. Few are privy to this information, but Limsa Lominsa is home to a certain secret fraternity. Its members are trained in a form of combat not unlike your own. By my judgment, it should not be beyond such individuals to adapt to the techniques I witnessed you employing with such admirable deftness. I am heartened to hear this. I too noted a kinship between your style and mine own. Though it seemed to me that you fought differently in the beginning. Uh, I, I suppose I did. What can I say? I'm a man of many talents. <laughs> Though you may labor to believe it, Thancred was once something of a scoundrel who fraternized with the criminal class in these parts. You stole her! You jest, of course. But for a chance encounter with Alfino's grandsire, he might never have left Limsa Lominsa, or received an education in Charlian, or taken up his post in Uldar, which is where he trained in the Blade, lest you wonder. Minfilia, please! <laughs> it would seem there is more to you than meets the eye, Master Thancred. Lady Yugiri, I am told that you and yours came to Eorzea seeking permanent resettlement, and that many domains have since been engaged as frontier hands at Revenant's Toll. Mordona is many things, but a place of refuge it is not. Know that I would like nothing better than to furnish your people with a new home here on Lominson soil. Alas, racked by instability as we are, our nation is in no fit state to take you in. Yet I'll not have it said that we turned a blind eye to your suffering. Until such time as we can do more, I pledge to send provisions. We are in your debt, Admiral. I realize that it scarce qualifies as repayment. But if it please you, I shall set about sharing my martial knowledge with your people at once. You wished a word in private.
The better not to spoil the festive mood. History repeats itself, Admiral. As the Kobolds did before them, the Sahagin resorted to summoning their god over a territorial feud. They acted in self-preservation. It may be that the Sahagin initiated this particular clash, but how it begins does not interest me so much as how it ends. I have not forgotten our conversation, Yashtola. I am aware that man bears part of the blame for the Primal's existence. Nor am I ignorant of the Sahagin's reason for acting. They sought to secure a place to breed and multiply that their kind might survive. Self-preservation, as you say. But we have as much right to live and thrive as they. If our own survival is threatened, are we to lay down our arms and welcome oblivion? Nay. And so you kill, that you might live. Yet if living is a right, then that right belongs to all peoples, be they men or beastmen. I'll not deny your reasoning, but when a storm gathers, it falls to me to see my people safely through it. That is my duty, and I shall do it. As must we all, Admiral. Stay the course, then, but know that it will lead to no good end. Man has ever put himself first and foremost. To justify his actions, he clads himself in the armor of righteousness though it be a fancy of his own making. In this, mayhap the Garleans and we Domans are not so different. Eorzea has become as a raging sea. If we are to keep our heads above the waves, we cannot scruple to drown the man next to us. When hopes of coexistence founder, Strength must determine who has the greater right to live.
I have been reflecting upon the events which took place during our visit to Vilbrand. If you have a moment, I would share my conclusions with you. Please, bear with me. When the Sahagin Elder summoned Leviathan, he employed the power we have come to know as the Echo. Though I cannot well explain the how of it, it would seem he became immortal in so doing. When the Admiral subsequently slew him, his spirit emerged from his lifeless flesh, a consciousness shorn of physical form. Thus transfigured, he took up residence in the body of his minion with the ease of a man donning a favorite glove. Long have I known that the Echo allows one to pass through the walls of a man's soul, but never did I imagine that it could free us from our own flesh, nor less that our souls could then occupy the next corporeal vessel to take our fancy. It was of this that Elidibus spoke, an existence which knows neither cessation nor oblivion. And yet, though the Sahagin had mastered his gift and thereby become immortal, he was by no means invulnerable. As we both bore witness, he was ultimately absorbed into Leviathan. And the import of this observation? If the Asian's mode of existence is indeed the same, it can be inferred that they too are not invulnerable, that they can be destroyed. There exists a legend which tells of souls who are reborn upon the cusp of each umbral calamity, that they might stay the encroaching darkness. To most, it is but a fairy tale, yet recent events have given me cause to wonder. Could the legend in fact refer to the Echo? Much and more yet remains unknown, but I am confident that all will become clear in time. For the present, however, what matters is that the key to defeating the Asians may at last be within sight. With Uriange's aid, it is my hope that I shall fathom this matter ere long. Oh, I was just about to send for you, my friend. Is Otomis? Grave tidings from the Charlian motherland, my lady. It doth concern our distant allies, the students of Baldessian. What of them? My lady, the Isle of Val, which for many years hath been the Order's home, is no more. No more? Whatever do you mean? I relate only that which hath been conveyed unto me by our agents. An etheric wave of the highest magnitude was recorded in the region. Soon thereafter, it was observed that the isle had ceased to be. Tis postulated that a magic was evoked, like in power to Ultima. Twelve Preserve. If there are no other matters, I move that today's meeting be adjourned. It is done, my lord. I... <clears throat> forgive my impertinence, my lord, but these orders... I am uncertain as to what end they serve. Revolution. <laughs>